presence here from the time we gathered in this place and the precious time of worship the testimony of our dear brother and sister every prayer that was brought before god and we thank god for everything that god has done here this evening and as my brother shared that we are come to an important part or item or aspect of this gathering this evening and that is god's word god's word plays a very significant and important part or plays in the life of a true disciple of jesus christ you know when you look at the creation of this world god created the heavens and the earth by the word of his mouth and by the holy spirit god does everything by the word and by the spirit and i believe that even this evening these two lives are going to be joined together not by any ceremony but is they are going to be joined together by the word and by the holy spirit that joining is something that would last for you know until god's purpose is fulfilled through their lives and therefore let us all be joined together uh in seeking god you know the best gift that you can ever give to nahor and sister i mean would be your full cooperation with us then any other gift you have for them the best of the gifts would be your full cooperation with us uh you know in this gathering in this service here and therefore even as we share god's word let's be attentive to god's word this word is so important to them and to every one of us who really love the lord let's look unto the lord in prayer thank you jesus Loving Father we thank you for your great mercies upon us that we all could gather together with our dear brother Nahor and sister Avino in this place of God and we thank you for your presence in this very place as one of our brethren prayed you are lifted up above the reason of our gathering above the gathering above for which we have come together for you are far above everything lord far above even our needs our situations and we once again want to bow down before you and acknowledge you as the lord of this gathering and the lord over our lives the lord it's our prayer again that as we turn to your word you would your word may be truly a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path and we pray oh god that you would enlighten us by the holy spirit that we may know your will and your mind especially our dear brother and sister 
that thy word would prepare them as they enter into the wedlock. That's our prayer of God. And we commit them both and commit all of us, all of us, every one of us gathered here. That we may hear your voice beyond words of man. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts. And we pray specifically, let thy word join these two lives and prepare them. And a strong foundation may be laid in their lives of God. To build a home. A home where you will reign and rule. Thank you, Father, we bless thee. Grant me the grace and the anointing, Lord, and order my words. Grant me every grace that I need. Worship thee, bless thee, and thank thee again. And in Jesus' most precious and matchless name we pray, Lord. Amen. We are living in a time marriage has become many things to men. And in the midst of such confusion, it is so necessary for God's children and true disciples of Jesus Christ to know what marriage is in the sight of God and how to go about it in our own lives. We know that as people belonging to different backgrounds, you know, we all are governed by our culture. Culture in every place plays a great role when it comes to marriage. It differs from country to country. There is a Western culture, there is Eastern culture, then there is Indian culture. Then we have our regional culture. We have Malayali culture, we have Naga culture. We have Meite culture, if I may say so. So we all have our culture. And with culture comes traditions. And we know that all these things play a great role when it comes to marriage. Of course, many other aspects of our life. And these things form our attitudes, our actions regarding marriage. And I've seen this over these many years in the work of the Lord. And it has been my, my deepest desire for the disciples of Jesus Christ that our lives must not be shaped by, you know, one's culture or traditions, but by the work of the cross, by the work of the word, or by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit. So as we heard these two lives, it is a matter of seeking and doing God's will. And it is here many have failed, not only the traditional denominational church realm, but also the believing churches, evangelical churches, Pentecostal 
churches. You know, men go by man's attitudes, mentalities, and ideas. But when it comes to marriage for a true disciple of Jesus Christ, the word of God is very clear. I can turn us to a scripture found in the book of Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then he says, and be not conformed to this world. So not only other aspects of our life, but it, when it comes to marriage, you know, it says that be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But it's unfortunate. Many decisions are made according to the world, according to what's happening around, you know, so many things are happening. You know, if you go to many Christian countries, quote, unquote, Christian countries, they love to live out of marriage, live together, live in relationships. Less responsibility, less legal problems. You know, so many things are happening. I'm not going to waste our time on that. But this is something to be acknowledged. Younger generations, they want to go by their will and their ways. And how wonderful to hear the testimony of two young lives that they wanted to do God's will. And as we all know, marriage was created by God as a sacred covenant, a covenant relationship between a man and a woman. It's a lifetime covenant, a life of faithfulness to one another in and through the covenants that they would make and they will make their covenants in a few moments. So God is the one who designed the marriage and he designed it in a way which is according to his own wisdom. Where was man when God created man and woman and conducted the first marriage? He didn't ask man the counsels. He didn't ask man, what should I do about marriage? He did it in his own wisdom. And this is where the difficulty arises. Even the first marriage was not meant for man's need. It was God's need. Then it was man's need. So we need to get the order right first. And that's why many places, their family lives are orderless. There is no order, there is no government. You know, as we heard even from their testimonies, God designed marriage to be a picture of himself. He designed marriage and it's a picture of God as triune God or, uh, you know, a trinity, in other words. Marriage is a picture of God and his people. We can see that all through the scriptures. 
Marriage is a picture of Christ and the church as we heard. And remember one thing, when man in his wisdom would mess up with marriage, we distort the perfect picture of God himself. Do you understand that? When man in his wisdom play around with marriage, he is distorting the very expression and image of God himself. It's too deep. Unless the Holy Spirit helps us, it's difficult for us to understand. You know, and therefore I want to say to Brother Nahur and sister today, you know, when we mess up marriage, our family life, it gives a different picture of God himself. Look at the broken families. As I visit other places abroad, it's so terrible to see Christian countries, so-called, where we look up, who brought the scripture, who sent missionaries to India. Go back there and see what's happening. There's not even one family where there's no divorce. When the word of God says God hates divorce. From where did this come again? Somebody twisted God's word as the Pharisees did in Jesus' times. If Moses says so, why is it so now? The Lord Jesus had a reply to them. But from the beginning, it was not so. Go back to the beginning, my friends. If you want to really follow the Lord, don't go for patchwork. You know, and I want to say to my dear brother and sister, therefore be strong that your convictions are based upon God's word. Not traditions of men. Not so-called systems of men. But your foundation is based on God's word. And as we have heard, even before. You know, God has set marriage as an expression of his relationship with his own people, with his church. And when it comes to the marriage, as I said, you do not find a, an example of marriage an exemplary family in the New Testament. Peter was never married. Sorry, Peter was married, sorry. Peter was married. He had his mother-in-law who was sick. Paul was never married. And many a time people ask me, why? In the Old Testament we have Abraham and so many others. But in the New Testament, we don't find an exemplary family shown as an example. And here is again the wisdom of God. Because Christ is the example for the husband. As we read that very clearly reflected in Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. Christ is the example for my brother. And Christ is the example for my sister. In Ephesians, in Philippians chapter 2 we read how Christ submitted himself to the Father. Submitted. Wives submit your own husbands. So we see that Christ is the example for both of you. Remember that always. And maintain that relationship with Christ and with one another. 
And remember that in your relationship with Christ and with one another, there could be times of discouragement, there could be times of failures, there could be times of struggles. But I want to always tell you one thing, or I want to say to you that you may remember always, as I have always shared with others, there is always forgiveness in Christ. There is always forgiveness in Christ for the past. There is always strength in Christ for the present. And there is always victory in Christ for the future. That means your relationship can be maintained with Christ and with one another. Then why marriages break up? If this provision is there in Christ, why do marriages break up? So I want to encourage you both. It is a lively relationship that you are to maintain in your family life. As we sing that song, God's great grace is greater than all our sin. So remember that relationship is so important in your family life, day-to-day -day life. You know, as I said a while back, in many places marriages are in deep trouble. And some people do not even realize this. They're not concerned about relationship. Because there is no real lordship of Christ and there is no cross working in reality. Where there is no cross, there can be no true relationship. Please understand this. So today we find many enduring marriages. Enduring marriages. They're just living. And then they have children. And they care for them. And they just go on with life. Enduring marriages. There is no real joy of the Lord. They're bound with mere outward responsibilities. But I want to tell you. That which is founded on Christ and his will. That which has begun on the altar of Christ. Is always sustained by the altar. You know so this is important dear brother Nahor and sister Avino. This relationship. You know when we look at the world today. The church realm today. It is as though word of God has got no power. The gospel of Jesus Christ has got no power. We can only sing beautiful songs on Sunday. Have a ceremony. And go back and live our lives like anybody else. And come back again on another Sunday. Because I belong to a Christian family or Christian church. That's not true Christianity. That's what the Bible says very clearly. The disciples were called Christians. Not Christians who were called disciples. That is what we see today. Turn to your own Bibles. Bible is not an ornamental book of Christians. Bible is the book by which we are to live. Bible is the mirror unto which we see and uh, see for ourselves how we look like. So please, my brothers and sisters gathered here, 
my own young brothers and sisters you know when we look at christendom today the professing in church world today it appears that god's word has no power and the holy spirit has no impact on our lives and especially on our marriages look at what's happening in the so called christian countries as well as i said it's terrible it's shameful and you know why it is because every man is turning to his own desire to his own will many are governed by the unbelieving world governed by their own flesh and i want to say something more this evening to both of you always remember that you give place to the holy spirit to enlighten your life in and through the word of god it is not enough to be well informed in our lives you know today we see a tendency among the people to be a well informed person and so we see oh so and so is a very well informed person so we are living in a time an intellectual world everybody wants to be well informed you know god doesn't want a bunch of well in well informed people in our church they have knowledge of things god wants a company of people who are changed and transformed as living members of the local church are people who are walking in the truth you know today we see people going about seeking for knowledge and information they seek for information and knowledge they may seek about knowledge on family life now there is a new way to do it and that is called google it up everything is google and therefore now we have also google pastors what his life would be nobody knows but in google he appears great and i would like to say to all of us god is not looking for well informed people on various subjects but god is looking for those who are changed and transformed and for that our spiritual eyes must be able to see see the principles of god's word and then when we see the principles of god's word we are to be responsible before god to walk in them and practice them in our lives and so i want to tell both of you what you need is light from god a real revelation and understanding and knowledge from god not mere bible knowledge and information that will not change your life you need to see it by the spirit 
and walk in it. You know, when I was praying about your marriage, Nahor and Sister Avino, I was really asking, Lord, what am I supposed to be sharing? There are a lot of things to share. I already shared a bit. And then, it wasn't easy. So as I was seeking the Lord, the Lord led me to a scripture portion. So you may be thinking, oh, Brother Joy, now you are coming to the subject. Yes. So for how long? I don't know. But you will be married today. <laughs> right. Praise God. So listen carefully. The purpose of sharing this specifically is that God has laid a specific word upon my heart to share with you today. And I have never shared this anywhere before in any of my sharings. And that was found, it, 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 it's a very strange word that God laid on my heart one night. And um, I don't know whether you had sleepless nights, but I had some of them. <laughs> and, and then and, uh, I, I found that that scripture is found in the book of Exodus. If you turn with me, Exodus. And chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And that's the message for you. A lamb for the house. Let me just read that portion. They shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. A lamb for a house. You know, and you all know, and I was just thinking about it. Israel, in every tent, in every house, they were to have a lamb in every house. And I was wondering, oh Lord, if there was a lamb in every home today, what homes that those homes would be? You understand what I'm saying? A lamb for every home or every house. Where in every family is living in a true relationship with the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. A Lamb for every house. You know, and I was wondering, Lord, what else you want me to understand from this? You know, what kind of homes we would have? Look at the family life today. Christ is not the real lamb there. And I was wishing if our very church, our body of Christ here in Delhi, where every house will have a lamb in true relationship, what a church that should be, would be. Not the picture of Christ somewhere in the home. 
not a scripture hanging on the wall that every home has but every home having a lamp having a real relationship and we all know that as we read chapter same chapter and verse 7 it says and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs they shall eat it and then i will read verse 13 and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of Egypt and we all know that the lamb here speaks about Jesus Christ the lamb of God and it says here every house having a lamb and they have to eat it they have to eat it they have to apply the blood upon the doorpost and they are to eat it and you know where they are to eat they are to eat it inside their homes not outside you know and all this would mean some deeper truths which I have no time to share with us. But one thing Lord laid upon my heart to share with my brother Nahor and sister Avino is the beautiful picture of the relationship with Christ in a living way. To always make sure that, that the blood is there upon the doorposts. And that you are eating the lamb, experiencing him in your life. There is so much there, but I'm not getting into it. If the Holy Spirit opens it up to you, blessed are you. Eat. Jesus Christ did not say in John chapter 6, if you do not eat my flesh, and drink my blood. You have no part with me. And people got mad. And they all left him. <laughs> but Peter and company said. Where can we go? So I'm sure there are those who are here. Who would say. This is word of life. But they said to Jesus. The words that you speak. Is spirit and life. Listen saints of God. And I want to encourage my brother. I was wondering why God has given me this word. Hold on to it my brother. Nahor and sister. I will know. Eat the flesh. Keep the doorposts always. Marked by. The blood of the lamb. Then what happens? What was happening in the land of Egypt? Tell me. Let me not become a preacher tonight. <laughs> now listen carefully. What was happening in the land of Egypt? Death, agony, sorrow, pain. But those who are within the walls of this house with the blood upon their doorposts and eating the Lamb of God, they were safe. They were safe. They were safe, Brother Nahor. I know you are writing down. Listen. Listen, this is the beauty of the relationship with Christ. Amen. The entire nation, the land of Egypt, 
weeping and wailing and crying, agony and death. But what was happening inside? Life, protection, covering, presence of God. What a privilege to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Despite reproaches, despite misunderstanding, despite people call you names, despite people curse you. What a privilege to be within this beautiful provisions of God. And I want to encourage my brother and sister. And when the destroyer came, he came near the house, but he saw the blood there. And he could not touch. But I want to tell you, there was the immunity from God. The destroyer could not touch them. They were under the immunity of the living God. And death and destruction could not touch them. And you know, see what we read in verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite Egyptians and when he see the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Amen. My dear brother Nahor and I know this word is for you. This word is for me. This word is for everyone. And this is a tremendous thing that we read. The destroyer came and saw this house. He went by. He went by. And then he went to another house. When he didn't see anything, there was no real relationship with Christ and his sacrifice. There is no feeding on Christ in their lives. He said, I will go in. I will go in. The destroyer could get in there, but the destroyer could not get in in the other one. And it's for me and for us to make sure that there is always blood upon the doorpost. And as we read, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Revelation chapter 12. You know, so to maintain that blood on the doorpost is my responsibility. It is your responsibility. So the destroyer came. What he saw, he went. And I want to tell you, you have heard me share from the two builders. You know, the wonderful thing about the one who built on the rock is that it will stand. There is, there is an assurance from God on that rock, it will stand. So I want to encourage you that you make sure in your family life that there is always blood. There is a relationship with Christ as the lamb that taketh away the sin, that brings salvation to us and bring that great salvation unto us. His blood has never lost the power. Let anything happen in the world. 
the blood has never lost the power my brother and sister please remember this not only he can forgive us our sins and be born again but the blood has not lost the power to bring you into the fullness in Christ Jesus you know this is the danger we see in christianity today this is what we see as a warning from the life of the children of israel in the old testament that blood could bring them out but they could not believe in god that the same blood has the power to help them to walk in faith and bring them into the land of promise and therefore i want to say to you this evening let's take the example and be warned from the life of the children of israel and as we heard you know when the destroyer came he could not have an access to this home where the blood was applied you know the destroyer you know what he said this belongs to another i have no power over this home i have no power over this home it belongs to another what a joy it is my brother and my sister so as i said the the blood has not lost its power and therefore i want to encourage both of you to trust in the lord and to walk by faith not only the blood can deliver us from egypt but the blood can protect you preserve you bring you into that faith relationship with the lord as you continue to eat the lord jesus christ the lamb of god you know he said i am the bread that came from heaven we must feed on christ in our daily life you know therefore submit to your circumstances submit to your circumstances which god will bring into your life and praise god for circumstances that would come into your life for the word of god says that god will try our faith so please understand this god will try our faith as gold is tried the word of god says and you will be proved and i will be proved you know whenever circumstances come which are hard and difficult you know many a time people have a negative mentality i have seen this with many believers oh what's wrong with me what wrong have i done did i sin against god remember you go through situations which are negative and hard and difficult it's not because you have sinned but god is seeing to it that you are what you are saying to be for example you say lord i want to be an overcomer how do you overcome so god brings a trial of your faith so that situation is coming into your life not because you have sinned or something so wrong with your life no it could be sometimes i'm not saying no but many a time god brings situations circumstances and he wants us to submit to those things 
in order to show us whether we are what we confess to be. You understand what I'm saying? So God will take us through circumstances and I want to encourage both of you. It is a walk of faith. You know, so God will bring situations and circumstances and he is making you to eat your own words. You understand that? To eat your own words, eat some of the lamb in your own life. Eat of the lamb. Eat that word that you have confessed. So, in other words, God is preparing you to walk by faith in these days. And I'm sure, my brother and sister, you will have many occasions wherein you will be called to submit to God's will, God's strange ways perhaps. But remember, it is never negative. Amen? It is always to bring you to that place of partaking of this lamb a little more, a little more in your life. Therefore, your home will be a place where your faith will be definitely tried. God will cause you to eat more of this lamb in your everyday life. And one joyful thing of eating the lamb in your life is you will begin to hear the lamb speaking from within. <laughs> the more you partake of this lamb, the more of the lamb you will keep hearing from within. <laughs> and may God bless your heart with this thought. All that I can say is that, you know, and that's how we are going to take strides of faith and victory in the coming days. You know, and uh, I just want to read one scripture. I'm going to close very soon. And uh, The book of Hebrews and chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 28, it speaks about through faith he kept the Passover and sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the firstborn should destroy them. And I want to encourage my brother and sister again. Please make sure in your life the lamb has his place. Amen? A lamb for every home. And what beautiful home that shall be where the lamb is eaten every day. Amen? That's one thing I want to tell you and I tell you everything else. You know, there's an immunity from the destroyer. All that is happening outside will have no access into that home. This is God's word and God's promise to God's people, to all of us and thus I would like to say, my brother and sister, continue to keep yourself unto the Lord. You know, and so God is interested in your character than your comforts. When people get married, people come and ask you, what all you have? What all you have? What all you're going to buy? And I want to tell you both, please, 
God is concerned about your character than your comforts. We have so many homes but characterless. No relationship. Bottles reign in the families than Christ. You know, so remember this. Characterless. But comforts. In, but God's divine economy is the other way. He wants people with character. More than comforts. So if your prayer can be, Lord, we want you and we want to be conformed to your life and character more than comforts. I tell you, God will answer you. And God will answer you in a measure that will be beyond your understanding. And not only that, when you seek after his character, God will not ignore your comforts as well. That is God's divine economy. So I want to encourage you both therefore. You know. God wants you to seek after his will. And do his will in your life. And finally as uh, our dear sister said. She has had many times the story of Ananias and Sapphira. There are times I have not shared that, but you know one thing, when God joined these two lives together in the, in the garden, you know when I shared once in South India, in one marriage about Ananias and Sapphira, the whole lot of pastors were upset. There's so many of them sitting on the stage and they all got upset. Why is he sharing about death in a marriage? That's what he said. But they don't know the scripture. That's why they said. Right in the garden of Eden, you know what Jesus said? What the Lord said? If you eat of that particular tree, what will happen? You will live. He said, you will die surely. So all these bunch of pastors, they did not know the truth. They didn't know the word of God. So they laughed at me. Right when first man and woman they were brought together. The Lord warned them. Don't eat of that fruit tree. If you eat of that fruit you will surely die. And that was the wisdom of God. But man did not take the wisdom of God. They went by their own wisdom and died. That's happening today also. Man does not want God's wisdom. They go by their own wisdom and give their neck to the old devil, that old serpent. So, Ananas and Sapphira. I would like to share that. Sister already preached that in her testimony. <laughs> Ananas and Sapphira. What a, what a uh, you know, warning to all of us. And I want to end my sharing with that word. Do not be of one mind to go against God. The first man and woman did the same thing. Please don't. Never be in agreement to go against God. That is why God has given you a wife. God has given you a husband. Alright? To check and balance. This is God's wisdom. If Ananias had brought in this idea and said to her, honey, which is Sapphira. The people call honey these days. So, Whatever that is, honey or ice cream, whatever that may be. <laughs> you know, she would have said, look, my dear, we had decided to give it to the Lord. 
How can you change your mind? His wife would have been a checking on her husband. Let's not do that. Let's not go against God. We had decided to give the whole thing to God. But why that change? No, we don't have bank balance. How about children's education? And therefore, let's just, nobody will know that. But what happened? She agreed with him. But if it had come from Sapphira, and if the man had stood the ground as head of the house, we will not do that, Sapphira. I love you. You are my wife. I respect you. I know that you love me. You do so much for children and for me, but I can't accept what you're saying. That family could have been saved. That family could have been saved. But, therefore, maintain healthy differences. We need it to save our home with the blood of Christ and eating of the lamb in our lives by both obeying. Amen? My brother Nahor and sister. So be one always to obey God. And do God's will. If there are differences, bring it to the Lord. And God will reveal his will to you. Remember, in marriage he revealed his will to you. Many more things. <laughs> it should not be that with marriage all the will is over. No. <laughs> Many more to come. And you must have the same earnestness. I say this because I've seen that. Many were very hungry, open, earnest when it came to marriage. But after that, they forgot. That's why a lamb for every home. I don't know why God gave me that word. God really gave me that word to share with you at this point of time. So God, help you, my brother and my sister, to have a home where you will find the immunity of God, the presence of God. You know, definitely a true picture of God expressed in a time when the picture of God is distorted because people have meddled with marriage and distorted the family life. May God help you. Praise be to God. Shall we all pray together? Thank you, Jesus. Shall we all stand up in his presence for a moment? Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Just a few moments. Let's honor God. Let's honor God's word. Let's honor his presence. He has spoken to those who are willing to hear. Our God is a gentleman. He never, never, ever forces himself on anybody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What have you heard tonight, this evening? Take it into your heart. A home where there is a lamb. The lamb of God. What an immunity from the destroyer. May God help us. What a church that shall be. With every family having the lamb. 
what a family that shall be father we thank you for this evening this moment to god you have given unto us to hear from your word your word is true god heavens and the earth will pass away but your word will never pass away as your disciples disciples of jesus christ born of the spirit born from above help us lord to be your true disciples and live on a god bearing your testimony in this earth in these terrible times when everything is distorted a wrong picture of thine is drawn before the world lord you are looking for a people who will truly reflect your life and live unto you and be a bride unto your son for is coming back again very soon but for a glorious bride who had prepared herself a bride compatible to the bridegroom father we pray help us we thank you for every word that you have spoken to our dear brother and sister and to all of us a lamb for at home a lamb for a home father reveal what that is to us and help us that we would eat the lamb and live in that blood relationship with you they overcame the destroyer by the blood of the lamb to experience that immunity in our lives oh god oh god what a provision and help us to walk by faith in these days by eating the lamb every day help us father come in these lives come in all of us our family lives our individual lives into thy faithful hands father we now we pray that your word and your holy spirit would even join these lives together we look up unto thee and we trust in thee lord for you to join these lives for your name and for your glory thank you father we bless you in jesus most precious and matchless name we pray lord amen please be seated for a moment <clears throat> thank you lord we would take very short time for the solemnization dear friends who have gathered here this evening we are assembled here in the presence of god to unite nahor and avino in marriage the bible teaches us that marriage is to be a permanent relationship of one man and one woman freely and totally committed to each other as companions for life our lord jesus christ declared that man shall leave his father and mother and unite with his wife in building of a home and the two shall become one flesh by his apostles he has instructed those who enter into this relationship to cherish a mutual esteem and love to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses to comfort each other in sickness trouble and sorrows in all honesty and to provide for each other 
and for their household, the things that pertain to God, and to live together as heirs of life. Let us all therefore, gathered here reverently, remember that God has established and sanctified marriage firstly, firstly, to further his will and his purpose through them in the earth and secondly, for the welfare and happiness of mankind. Firstly, to further his will and purpose through them in the earth. And secondly, for the welfare and happiness of mankind. And therefore now, I would say to Nahor and Sister Avino, today, you both are presenting yourself. before this congregation to declare your intention of uniting your lives voluntarily and honorably for the service of God and man. For the service of God and man. You are making therefore a double dedication to each other in a lasting and indivisible union that shall endure for the remaining years of your lives. And to God, that he may make you his dual instrument for the accomplishment of his purpose, both in and by your personalities. The achievement of this purpose will require appreciation of each other abilities and virtues, forgiveness of each other's faults, each other's faults, and, un and unfailing devotion to each other's welfare and development. There must be on your part a united concern, a united concern, listen carefully, a united concern to the purpose of God as he progressively reveals it to you by his word, by his Holy Spirit, and an unhesitant acceptance by faith. Amen? The challenges that he sets before you. I would like to say that again to you. Listen carefully. There must be on your part a united consent to the purpose of God as he progressively reveals it to you by his word and by his Holy Spirit and an unhesitant acceptance by faith, the challenges that he sets before you. Now I will request both of you to stand up where you are. Just stand up where you are. And I would like to share with you some things very specifically. So listen carefully and may God help you. I charge you both. Therefore, First of all, to consider that your promises to each other are made in the presence of God. Who remembers your pledges. Okay? He remembers your pledges. You may forget, but he remembers your pledges. And who holds you responsible for performing them. Okay? They must be kept inviolable before God. I charge you. Now I admonish you in Christ Jesus. To keep in mind that each of you is the object of Christ's great redemption. 
unto his purpose and should be valued accordingly. Neither should be neglected or belittle by the other. Esteem each other as God's gift for mutual aid, comfort, and joy. And as a repository means a storehouse of complete confidence and trust. I charged you, I admonished you. Now I encourage you. I encourage you both to share willingly and sympathetically your joys and worries. Share with one another. Do not remain closed. Share, communicate. Your success and struggles. And to be neither considered or self-satisfied by the former, your success. Nor depressed by the latter, your struggles. Whatever may prevail, whether success or struggles, cling closely to each other. That defeat may be met by united strength. Okay? And victories by united joy. So this is important. Okay? Praise God. I encourage you, now I advise you. I advise you to recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as the head of your house, your home. The ruler of your destinies and the object of your deepest affection. If you do, he will confirm your marriage by his guidance. Amen. By his guidance. And will overshadow it with peace. I therefore now charge you both to love each other and to serve him with sincere hearts and determined wills until your mutual service life as a family for him shall be complete. And I want to say to the congregation here seated, in a few moments, they are going to make their covenants with which each other. And you are called here as a witness. Not only just to come here and have a joyful time and wish them and go back, but to carry them in your hearts. Pray for this family. Oh God, help them to be a family where Christ is seen. Christ is lived. Amen? I give you the responsibility. And we need to. That's why you are here as a witness. As they make these vows, that they will be able to keep that covenant. And Christ will be visible in their family as we heard. And therefore now I would say to the congregation gathered here, Marriage was ordained for the hallowing of the union between man and woman into which holy estate Brother Nahor and Sister Avino come now to be joined. Therefore, if anyone can show any just cause why they may not lawfully, lawfully be joined together in marriage, let him now declare it or else forever, hereafter, hold his peace. I will request the congregation now to stand. And I will request <coughs> brother and sister to come forward. <coughs> 